on, Dr. Meyer. Here's the toucan. Jason, I didn't say toucan. I said you can. Oh. My name is Dee Vogel. I'm a flight nurse for Air Link. And I'm Al Simons. I'm a flight paramedic for Air Link. And we're here to give you another edition of You Can, Too Can. We're going to show you a way to immobilize patients today when you find them in a standing position, but you've decided that they do require C-spine immobilization. We encounter this pretty often in the field. Situations that we typically, typically encounter in are going to be patients who are walking around after a motor vehicle accident or an assault case. We get there, we examine them, and we decide we need to protect their C-spine. We don't want to continue to let these patients walk around the scene, and we don't want them to lay down on a backboard on their own because that causes uneven manipulation of their C-spine. So we're going to show you a really fast and easy way to immobilize somebody from a standing position and get them to a supine position on a long spine board. When we encounter a patient on a call and we decide that they require C-spine immobilization but they're standing, the first thing we need to do is come up and hold manual C-spine traction. The best way to do that is to stand in front of a patient so that they don't look around. You can also go ahead and evaluate distal pulse movement and sensation at this point, ask them if they have any numbness or tingling, and because you're going to want to redocument that again after we immobilize this patient. The next thing we need to do is explain to the patient the procedure we're going to do. We're going to tell them that we're going to put a C collar on them and we're going to put a backboard behind them and lay them back on the ground. So we'll go ahead and put the C collar on. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is place the backboard directly behind the patient. And we're going to place a rescuer on the right and the left side of the backboard. And they're going to place one of their hands through one of the rungs on the backboard to support the board as we lower it. And their other hands are eventually going to support the patient under their armpit. But I've got to get around to the back to maintain C-spine. So they're each going to take a hand on each side of the neck and hold the patient's neck in place. A tall person works good to go behind the backboard. So I'm going to assume C-spine here, and the two rescuers are now going to place their hands under the patient's armpit so the patient doesn't slide down the board as we move back. When everybody's ready, we're going to move as a unit and lower the backboard down. Is everybody ready? Okay, on three, we'll lower the patient. One, two, three. Nice, slow, control movement. Okay, now we're going to reposition the patient so that they're fully on the board. When everybody's ready, on a three count, we'll move the patient. Is everybody ready? ready. One, two, three. Okay, from this point, we would go ahead and apply head blocks that you would have in your departments, strap the patient down on the board, we check their distal pulse movement and sensation again, and if we had the time, we could pad any voids to make them more comfortable on the backboard. That's been another edition of You Can, Too Can.